Bonanea Wumpka. Bonane. Happy New Year. There you go. Thank you. That's one I didn't. I, I, I'll have to learn that one. Thanks, Guy. You know, uh, every pastor or preacher has a favorite well from which they draw for, uh, for illustrations to, to make their point when they're, when they're preaching or teaching. And so I was just listening to Elaine this morning, and I'd be fascinated to hear her preach drawing from the well of the Muppets and uh, Yosemite Sam and all of the cartoon characters. I think that'd be a fascinating thing. Uh, you up for that some point? Oh, yeah. oh good, good. All right. Awesome. The scripture says that when Jesus, or when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, and after the other, one after the other, surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. You know, as I read that, um, uh, I was reminded how easy it is for us to fall into the trap of inquiring about somebody else's life. I uh, wonder what theirs is going to be like, or why did this happen to them and not to me? Why did they get that and not me? Um, and right at the table, I can hear the inquiry. I mean, they're sad. The disciples are wondering, who is it that would betray Jesus? We've been with him for these perhaps three years. And who would betray him? Who would, who would be like that? So they're inquiring. They're, they're curious. But there's a certain level of curiosity that emerges, uh, as we know, throughout the disciples' lives that's more than simple curiosity or an inquiry into someone's health and well-being. I know over the years I've changed my response to greetings generally from uh, somebody saying, hey, how you doing? to saying, just fine, or okay, or I'm fine, how are you, to mostly well. And I've done that over the years, now probably 10 or 15, to see if they really want to follow up with that. Are they really interested, or are they simply being courteous, but not interested? So as I read this, I'm thinking, all of this is happening to these disciples. They're thinking, who would betray Jesus? And why? Uh, but there's probably more to their curiosity than that. In fact, if we go to John's gospel, we see that this is true. Jesus has been resurrected, and he's appeared to the twelve, and, and he's wandering around greeting people and letting them know what's going to happen next. And, of course, he meets up with Peter and he and Peter have a conversation, and Peter's pardoned by Jesus, and the invitation to Peter is given to go and feed his sheep. And Peter's a little more concerned about that other disciple, the one who leaned over and said to Jesus, who's going to betray you? Of course, John, who's the writer of this gospel in which the story is written. And so Peter turns and sees that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them, this is the one who'd leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? And Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. You know, the invitation to us all when we come to the communion is to come as individuals that are part of a body. And that's an interesting and mysterious thing. Uh, we're a part of this interesting body, and everyone in this room and those others in the globe who name the name of Jesus and seek to follow him, we're all part of that one body, but we're all at the same time individuals, and we have lives that God focuses on as individuals. It takes us to places sometimes that we don't want to go, some, somewhat like we sang about. And he takes us to places that we'd love to go, treats us to those. Sometimes he engages in our lives in ways that we wish he wouldn't. And other times, he doesn't engage in our lives in the ways we wish he would. We're all individuals in that way. But when we come to this place, we're part of this collective body. And our inquiry into one another's lives now is, can we share this meal together and celebrate together this wonderful thing, this gift that we've been given, this gift of life, where God is indeed engaged 
sometimes in ways we realize and other times ways we do not. So let's ask the right questions about people. How you doing? Are you really doing okay? How's life going? Is it, is it really going okay? Is there something that I could do as a part of this body, this family, that could be helpful to you? That'd be a good way to start the new year, I think. How can we be of help to one another? Ask the right questions, inquire in the right ways. Be sure that we actually are interested in the response and prepared to do something with it when it comes. So as we share this meal, let's do so, celebrating a new year and celebrating that we are indeed a part of the body, but individuals therein. And let's look to God to lead us in the coming year in good ways, ways unseen and those that are seen. Father, thank you for this meal that we celebrate. Bless it to us. Nourish us with it. Strengthen us with it. Help us, Father, to see you in the events of our lives and to inquire into those events in other people's lives in ways that will respond, that invite us to help to dig in, to be sincere and genuine. In Jesus' name, amen.